You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. This is BRFM 95.6. I'm Daniel, and now it's time to review the interview I did with James Crane on the Daniel Monday Night Community Show. And I normally catch up with James once every couple of months with lots of useful information and contact details. Some of the things James is going to be covering during this interview as we review it is uh, all about Halloween and uh, bonfire night. Also, how to make yourself more visible when on an unlit road at night. And if there's no footpath present, which side of the road should you walk on? So some useful safety advice and information on those subjects. And uh, this is what James had to say when I spoke to him on Monday. Uh, James, how can our listeners find out who their community warden is? Well, the easiest way is through the website, which is uh, www.kent.gov.uk forward slash community wardens. Um, there's currently three community wardens who cover the Isle of Sheppey. There's myself up in Laysdown and Warden, Cheryl Hendry who uh, covers Minster and Dave Osborne in Sheerness West. Now do you work alongside the police or are you independent James? Um, well primarily we are independent from the police although we do work closely with them because many of the items we deal with are also matters of criminal law uh, for example fly tipping, graffiti, vandalism and antisocial behaviour. And uh, James I know you wanted to cover a little bit about Halloween and uh, bonfire night which uh, really is not that far off although it seems hard to believe. Yeah I know I, I mean uh, Halloween is, is uh, just, uh, just over a month way and um, bonfire night is about what week or so after that yeah. just about so it's so you get you we literally got two fairly big events coming up um in just over, just over a month i mean the first first of all being halloween or all hallows eve if you want to be uh finicky about it but we'll, we'll cross that boundary later um i really um so the, i've just got some guidelines for halloween uh, which um Again, yeah, the, the, the guidelines for those who wish to go trick or treating, um, and these really are um, take an adult with you, um, because some people do get a bit put off by by, by seeing groups of kids wandering about, um, especially around Halloween when when they're all dressed up, fancy dress, masks, the lot. Um, but I think by taking an adult with you, it can calm some people down, as there is someone responsible with that group. Um, only call at houses where people know you. I know. I know it's tempting to fi- find yourself a, find yourself a nice long road. You've got a big empty bag, and, and you just knock on every single house down there um, to, to get a, to get a handful of sweets from each one. But again, uh, some people might not like Halloween. Um, so yeah, if you if you call at houses where people know you, you've got less chance of uh, people who might might not want you there. Um, also, if you see a sign that um, that requests you not to call there, the no trick or treat signs then please respect this sign as, as, as the person obviously does, doesn't want to be continually disturbed all night. Um, also, most importantly, is not to throw eggs or flour at, uh, at houses, people, vehicles, etc. Um, sometimes it, it, it can be classed um, a, a, as a nuisance. If it damages anything, obviously the police will get involved, um, especially if you get egg, eggs and flour together, um, the egg dries, the flour doesn't come off, and... There can there can be quite a substantial cleaning bill for the person involved, um, but but also many shops at this time of year uh, won't sell eggs and or flour to persons under the age of sixteen, uh, similarly to uh, uh, cut down on the amount of incidents that uh, this uh, that this may cause. I mean, um, the, I mentioned earlier the uh, the do not call signs. Um, I've uh, got some of those that lays down office if. Uh, any, any, any of my residents are listening. I'll also be dropping them off at a couple of shops around the area, um, but also in, in uh, your warden around your area, or even your local PCSO, or even police officer, uh, if you should be able to contact them uh, to ask about trying to get hold of some of the, some of these signs. Um, alternatively, I think they can be downloaded off of the internet or printed off. Um, and and yeah, so so if, if you don't want trick or treat, then it's probably beneficial uh, for you to do that. Um, jumping, jumping on a week from that to uh, bonfire night. Um, again, the cel- celebration of uh, Guy Fawkes. Um, it's probably safer to go to an organised display. I mean, the, the, um, the, you get these professional companies that put on firework displays for different uh, organisations. Um, that they've got, they've got all these safety features in there. All the fireworks are angled to go away from people. There's a, there's a distance between the persons and the fireworks. 
and uh, there's generally less to go wrong than in a uh, display in your back garden where you have the Roman candle uh, buried in, in, the, in, in the mud that then falls over. But, as I said, as I said th th these, these are only guidelines, and uh, uh, by no way can I uh, uh, force you to do something in this. Um, only, the only thing that I will say that I, would, that I would like people to take note of is that only buy fireworks which are marked with the serial number BS7114. This is the, the British standard for fireworks, and it shows that they have been manufactured to a set um, safety parameter so that the chance of malfunction or anything else is very, very slim. So that's only, only by fireworks marked with BS, it's Bravo Sierra 7114. It's also um, good to know that it's actually against the law for any person to sell fireworks to anyone under the age of 18. It's also against the law for anyone to be in possession of fireworks if they're also under the age of 18. Again, um, people shouldn't own fireworks intended for a professional display without the correct licensing um, for them, as um, th there are about five or six different categories of fireworks, ranging from your, uh, your little mini indoor fireworks right up to your professional grade that you, that you do need specialist licenses for. And it's also against the law to set off fireworks after 11 o'clock at night, that's 2300 hours, and before 7 o'clock in the morning at 0700. Um, except on November the 5th, when it's extended to uh, one minute before midnight, it's 23.59. And even New Year's Eve, Diwali and the Chinese New Year, when this time is, is again extended to one o'clock in the morning. But if anyone does wish to find out any more information, um, especially for things about the firework code, the information can be found on uh, another government website, which is www.dti.gov.uk forward slash fireworks. Um, but also, if fireworks are used in a manner that causes a nuisance, then you're liable for an £80 fine. Um, also, if fireworks are used dangerously, a prison sentence may be issued. And uh, just, just, to, just to warn people about this, the maximum sentence for that is life. James, how can you make yourself more visible when on the, an unlit road at night? Well, most simply, um, is wear bright clothing. Um, it's surprising how much warm clothing is manufactured in dark, sober colours. Um, it's fine for motorists, but not for pedestrians. Uh, preferably, uh, wear a bright reflective coat and or leggings. Um, if this is not done, as a minimum, um, consider wearing a reflective sash over your outer garments. Uh, these are relatively in inexpensive. Um, I th 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 think uh, go to Halfords or something, or any other... Um, retailer, Tesco, to, to, to name but two. Um, yeah, g go to uh, some of that. They will sell th th things like that. Um, even if it's just something to slip out, slip over the top of what, what you are wearing, just to um, uh, make it stand out more in car headlights. Um, secondly, carry a torch. Uh, powerful torches are nowadays small and reasonably lightweight. Many of these uh, are LED designed, the light emitting diodes. Um, they are uh, really reliable, extremely bright, and the light they give out can be seen more easily than the conventional torch bulb. Plus, there's less chance of an LED breaking compared to uh, the conventional bulb. Many of these torches will be capable of flashing their beam, and flashing lights can often be more noticeable than a steady light. And finally, walk where you can be seen. I mean, I don't expect people to walk in the middle of the road, um, even if there's no footpath existing. Um, that would be foolish. But it's equally foolish to skulk in the banks and the hedgerows, uh, where drivers would find it hard to spot you, even if they were expecting you to be there. So, if um, if there is no footpath, James, uh, which side <coughs> of the road should you walk on? Well, there's no single hard and fast rule to observe, other than to say that you should walk where you can best be seen. Um, on a straight road, this is um, easy, in that you ought to walk on the right-hand side, where you'll be facing the oncoming traffic. The problem comes when you approach a bend, especially if you're walking on a country road, perhaps with hedging or a high bank running alongside. If the road bends to the right, you should consider crossing the road so that you'll be walking on the outside of the bend. You are always more visible to the traffic if you keep to the outside of a bend. This is because oncoming traffic uh, from in front of you will often stick close to the near side of the road as to give as much clearance as possible to any traffic coming towards them so they can avoid collisions. Um, if you didn't cross the road to keep to the outside of the bend, you would risk being run over by those drivers who hug the near side edge. You must, of course, uh, keep very aware of any traffic coming from behind you and be prepared to stop 
turn sideways and stand still to allow traffic to pass by. I am aware that some advice clings to the rule that you should always walk uh, on the right to face oncoming traffic, but this, is, but this does increase the risk to yourself on the right-hand bends. Left-hand bends are not so much of a problem, as by facing the oncoming traffic, you will stay on the outside of the bend where you're always most visible. James, I know you wanted to cover a little bit about frost and snow damage to the roads and uh, highways. KCC, uh, Kent County Council, has got a duty of care towards its visitors and residents, and this is particularly relevant at the start of spring when the winter has been especially cold. Um, spells of cold weather um, can leave a number of potholes and broken surfaces, which Kent County Council are keen to be told about. Um, potholes are caused by frost water freezing the soil underneath the road, uh, causing it to expand, which cracks the surface. And when the ground thaws, the water drains away, leaving the cracked surface to fall into the crevice and creating the pothole. Um, you get two or three times of, of that happening over the winter. Excuse me. Get that happen a couple of times over the winter, and uh, sure enough, you, you get yourself quite a nasty pothole. Uh, sometimes this can even, even be caused by... Um, a, cr a cracked drain pipe and the water runs underneath the road channels away the water then eventually the road surface will, will collapse into it um, but Kent County Council are always keen to learn of any potholes and broken surfaces in adopted highways an adopted highway is one where Kent County Council have agreed to maintain generally this includes all concreted or asphalted roads and pavements in the borough um, an unadopted road is usually a road which is not yet asphalted or concreted. As a result, KCC have no responsibility to maintain these surfaces. Uh, what useful contact details have you got for our listeners this time? Right, yeah, I mean, I mean, I've, I'm, I'm going to go through the uh, the normal ones that I do, which is uh, Kent Police, Strawberry Council, Kent County Council with their, their call centre and uh, the number four Kent Highways, uh, and also the, uh, the two websites that I, I gave out earlier. So first of all, we've got Kent Police. Uh, they've got two numbers. Got their emergency number, which everyone should know, which is nine nine nine. They've also got their non-emergency number, which is one zero one. So you've got nine 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 and one zero one. Uh, Swear by Council um, to their call centre, which can put you through to uh, any other service, whether that be for noise nuisance, um, the dog warden, um, street cleansing, parking, etc., etc. It's oh one seven nine five four one seven. 850. Um, Kent County Council, their uh, main contact centre is uh, 08458 245 247. Kent Highways, which is 08458 247 800. And the two websites that I gave out one which is for the community wardens, which is www.kent.gov.uk forward slash community wardens. And the information about uh, the fireworks and everything else is www.dti, that's Delta Tango India, .gov.uk forward slash fireworks. James, as always, I'd like to thank you very much for uh, coming along this evening. Yeah, and uh, thank you uh, once again, Daniel, for uh, have, having me back, uh, which uh, I've been doing for best probably the best part of the last four years yeah yeah it's always good to have you here and uh, we'll see you in another couple of months november time hopefully. yeah indeed no worries okay look forward to seeing see you then james